Are you in the flow, but you wonder how exactly you got there? Or maybe you're not in the flow and you're wondering how to find it. For creatives, there's nothing better than being in the mystical and magical thing we call the flow. Today, I'm gonna to help you find your flow and to stay there. I'm Jeff Keturba, and on this channel, we talk about the creative process and overcoming obstacles so you can follow your dreams. Ah, the creative flow. Finding your creative flow can help keep you inspired and productive when you're pursuing your creative dreams, no matter what projects you find yourself pursuing. So, do you know the flow? The flow is that feeling that all is right with the world, that everything is smooth sailing on the river of ideas. When you're in the flow, you might lose track of time, forget to eat. Hours pass by as if they were just minutes. You have a sense of clarity and serenity. For creatives, the flow is essential. When you're in it, you feel liberated and free to try new things without self-judgment. You discover new things about your creative self and about the project you're working on. New concepts come to you, new solutions to old problems. Your inner universe experience expands and one success builds upon another, builds upon another. It's like infinity. And dare I say, it almost seems easy. And if you fail, ah, you take it in stride because you know that failure is all part of the creative process. In fact, ha <laughs> you almost laugh at failure <laughs> because your confidence is riding high and you know it's all going to work out. And the flow feels so good well, you wish you could just bottle it up. Now, compare that to creative block and burnout. Well, that can be pretty awful. And we've all experienced that from time to time. When you're in a block or experiencing burnout, it's like you're in a dark hole with no signs of light or answers. And it feels like no matter what you do, you can't dig yourself out. You begin to question everything. Like, should you even be pursuing your dreams and goals? And worst of all, you might begin to beat yourself up. Don't do that. So let's get you into the flow, into that state of being where you are at the top of your game and feeling great. Since we can't go to the store and just buy a bottle of flow, how do we find it? To start, always remember that if you have dreams instilled within you, that's a sign that you are meant to pursue those dreams and goals. There's a reason those dreams are within you. And once you've started on that path, always stay true to your why, your overall reason for pursuing this particular dream or goal. Carry that with you inside. Remember it. Don't forget it. Know yourself. Observe yourself. Things like, what time of day are you most productive? Are you an early morning person when everything is quiet and calm? Maybe getting in some creative time before you head off to your job or taking the kids to school. That time when you're just waking from the dream state. Or are you a night owl working by the light of the moon? Just because you stay up late binging your favorite Netflix show doesn't mean that's necessarily the best time for your creative process. If you're not yet sure when you're at your best in terms of your energy, start paying attention to your natural rhythms. And Experiment. Observe. For years, I thought I did my best work late at night, maybe because I didn't want to go to bed. But then when I experimented with the getting up super early, I discovered that that is when I am at my best self. First thing in the morning, when just coming out of the dream state, know which environment works best for you. Is it a quiet nook in your home or a coffee shop? With the buzz of conversations? Maybe it's a local library. Maybe it's in your car. Maybe there's an empty cube at your job where you can take your lunch by yourself, eating your PB&J while working on your project. Or maybe there's a coffee shop you could hit right before or after work. Hey, I realize that with work schedules and if you have kids, it can get super complicated. If you don't know when you are at your best self, investigate and experiment and get creative in your pursuit of creativity. Maybe you wake up an hour early before anyone else. Carve out that little extra time for yourself or you for your projects, for your passions. Or maybe after dinner, when you open your laptop, it's not to watch Netflix, but it's to write your book. Or maybe you're starting a food truck. And so your creative process is trying out new recipes for your family meal. But mom, breakfast burritos again? But this one uses tofu. It's not that your routine and your location can't change and evolve over time, depending on the project, depending on your schedule. But know yourself, know what works best for you. And these basic things can at least help you get started on the road finding your inner flow. Also, it's essential to remove outside distractions. And yes, in our hectic lives, that can sometimes be nearly impossible. I get it. But you have to be strong. And maybe this is where your schedule or location comes in. There are plenty of stories about successful writers who find 
an office in the basement of a building with no windows. Personally, I love looking out the window and daydreaming, and that helps get the creative flow going for me. But if taking that distraction away helps you, then go for it. There's this great story about the writer, Jonathan Franzen. Back when you had to still use an ethernet cable for the internet, he stuck super glue in the little port to prevent him from ever plugging in and surfing the web. Do what you gotta do. So if you have things like laundry and dishes piling up, look the other way and save those chores for later. I promise, they'll still be waiting for you. In fact, when your brain needs a little refresh, you can use that time doing the laundry or dishes to recharge your batteries. Do the laundry later when you're mentally fatigued, but under no circumstances, give your best self the stuff that doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. Remember, the thing that matters is that dream, that passion instilled within you. In 20 years, no one will ever know if you did or didn't do the dishes on any given day. But if you compose a song, make a painting that touches people's hearts, they will remember that forever. Hey, better yet, build in time to go for a walk or to take a quick nap. A nap? Yes, a nap. I fully endorse you taking a quick nap. Even a five minute nap can do wonders and allow you to tap into that subconscious part of your brain. Even if you can't take a short nap, if you're not capable, at least sit and breathe and do nothing for just five or six minutes. You can even do that on your lunch break at the office. Go out to your car, go for a walk, go to a park. When I was a full-time cartoonist working at a newspaper and I was working out ideas, I would sometimes go to a local park and I would just lay in the grass and just take a quick nap or just close my eyes for a few minutes. And it really helped. And when I got back to the office and I was working on my cartoon, I realized that I had grass stains on my suit pants. Well, what did it matter? I didn't care if I had grass stains on my clothes. I had an idea and that's what really counted. Taking a break from your work to do laundry or to go for a walk, that allows the subconscious part of your brain to do some of the work for you. I mean, your subconscious is still you, but well, you know what I mean, it gets kind of complicated. And don't overthink it. It's like there's an even deeper, even more intuitive version of you inside of you. It's kind of cool. Maybe it's just your wonderful, beautiful muse. You don't need to fully understand it. Just trust that it's there and working on your behalf. When you're doing nothing of importance, you might even have that light bulb moment. Bing! that wonderful moment when suddenly the solution to the problem appears. Just don't stay away from the work too long. Don't take too long of a nap. Don't go for too long of a walk. Don't go to the park and sleep there for two hours. Maybe till the cops say, hey, you gotta move. Don't stay away from the work too long. Embrace your failures. There are no mistakes and there are no true failures. What we might call a failure is really just an opportunity to learn about yourself, to learn about your creative process, to learn about what works and doesn't work in that project. I love thinking about space travel in this context. Think of all the rocket failures that occurred before the successful ones. And each time scientists learned and improved. Beating yourself up is never helpful. Self-care and self-kindness is a must. Did all those rocket scientists beat themselves up and give up? No, because that's not rocket science. Well, I mean, there's a lot more to rocket science. It's all about being kind and loving to yourself. That's the kind of rocket science I can understand. Remembering why you've started on this path toward your goal, your reason, your passion, the one that is in your heart and soul be open to new experiences. Read a book on a topic that's out of your regular reading routine. Challenge yourself with a film you wouldn't normally watch. Maybe it's some obscure foreign film. Or listen to a genre of music that's not in your personal playlist. Doesn't mean you have to love it or ever listen to it again. Intake new information from time to time. Being open to new things can expand your horizon. Just be careful that you're not intaking to the point of distracting you from your larger goal. That is to create this thing that has been calling out to you. All things in moderation. Oh, and also be open to a different path. A new and better option may present itself to you. Take time to process that. Is that truly a better option? Be open. That's all part of the process. Don't let it distract you from your original goal. So at the end of the day or early in the morning or hey, in the middle of the afternoon during lunch, whatever that time is for you, the main thing is to show up and to do the work. Find that time when you are at your best self each and every day. Let your muse know that you mean business, even when you don't feel like it, especially when you don't feel like it. Over time, your mind and body and soul will begin to expect you to show up to do the work. And that's when the muse will come and work their magic. The flow is just waiting for you to dive into the river, to the ocean, to the universe, whatever it is, it's waiting for you. Keep in mind and in your heart that driving passion within you. That's your momentum. That's your rocket fuel. Know yourself and what works best for you, your schedule, 
your location. Embrace your failures, learn from them, and always be gentle with yourself. And most of all, show up every day, even when it's hard, and trust that things will smooth out and you will get into the flow. Hey, creatives, I'd love to hear your experiences with being in the flow in the comments, how you get into the flow and how you stay there. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like. And if you want more content on the creative process and overcoming obstacles to follow your dreams, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching. And now go get in the flow.